Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today. What I'm going to be bringing you is the penultimate match preview of the 2021-22 season. Today what I'm going to be bringing you is the Sutton United versus Bradford City match preview. Now if you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure you drop a like on it. If you could channel it, 50 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers. So make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. Get your post notification bell on as well so you don't miss a video of when I upload. And make sure as well to drop a comment in down in the comment section down below. What is your score prediction for this match? Share the video around with your family and friends as well. Now it's going to be a very tough match. I don't think Sutton have lost at home since like October or something crazy like that. They're quite clearly in a playoff promotion hunt at the moment we all thought that eventually they would fall away but they just haven't since them coming up from the national league last season i think they won the title last season they've been absolutely fantastic so we'll speak a little bit more about how they've got on this season my team sutton's last couple of results all that sort of stuff make sure you drop a like on today's video subscribe if you are new as well and let's get on to today's match preview so my team, Bradford City, we're currently sat 16th in the Skybit League 2 table. After 44 matches, we've now got 12 wins, 16 draws, 16 defeats, 47 goals scored, 54 goals conceded, leaving us on a minus 7 goal difference and 52 points. Our last couple of games then have been a win, a loss, a draw, a draw and a loss. That then compared to Sutton United, they're currently sat 7th in the Skybit League 2 table. After 44 matches, they've got 23 wins, 10 draws, 13 losses, 66 goals scored, which is the third most in the league behind Swindon and Forest Green who are both on 72. 49 goals conceded though leaving them on a positive 17 goal difference and 73 points. They literally have 21 more points than us. So tells you how poor we've been this season. We've all due respect to a team like Sonny who've just come up from the conference. I know teams that usually do come up from the National League who come up into League 2, they usually do actually do quite well. It's just for some reason that seems to be the case. But Sonny's last couple of games then have been a win, a loss, a win, a win and a win. So four losses uh, sorry, four wins in their last five matches. The last couple of games then have been a 3-0 win at home to Crawley Town. A 1-0 defeat away to Barrow, who went down to 10 men in that game as well. So not a great result there for Sutton or whatsoever. That might be a result that they'll look back on maybe at the end of the season if they don't pick. I mean, to be fair, the last couple, the last two matches are us and Harrogate. So they, they've got to be aiming for at least four to six points there, which I think would, would probably get them into the playoffs. Uh, just before the Barrow game, though, they had a 1-0 win at home to Newport. A 3-2 win away to Mansfield. I remember Nigel Clough you know, making it very clear that whatever you do against Sutton, do not go behind in, against them because they're so hard to break down once they do go in front. They're so defensively well organised that it really will be a challenge. Before that though, they had a 1-0 win at home to Leighton Orient and obviously they had that 4-2 loss in the Football League Trophy final. Their last home loss, like I said, if I... If I've done this correctly, it was back in October when they played Walsall at home and lost 1-0 at home. Obviously, in the previous fixture, when both sides met on the 11th of December, we drew 2-2 in that game. Sutton took the lead through Robert Milson. He took a penalty when Niall Canavan was sent off for bringing someone down last man. He's obviously no longer with the club. Two minutes later, though, Theo Robinson levelled things up in the 34th minute. And then with 15 minutes left on the clock, Sutton took the lead again through Smith. But then five minutes later, with only nine minutes left on the clock, Leang Angle stepped up to tap home. I mean, that game, I'm pretty sure Angle was offside and Angle also saved one off the line with his hands. So we're probably not going to get the swings and roundabouts sort of thing with the referees in this match. I mean, it wasn't a great performance from us, but considering we had 10 men, I thought we played quite well in that match, to be honest with you. I mean, our team wasn't the greatest. We played a five at the back as well in that game. And when you've got Derek Adams as your manager and you're playing five at the back, it's not exactly going to be the most free-flowing attacking sort of football. But the team that I would go with then, if I was Mark Hughes, I'd go with like the 4-3-3 system that we have been playing recently I'd go with Bassing goal now I mean I, I would give O'Donnell another chance but I don't think he'll go with O'Donnell for whatever reason O'Donnell doesn't seem to be getting a chance at the moment I'm not really too sure why that is but Bass obviously made an error against Scunthorpe we're kind of used to Bass making the mistake every couple of games or so so fingers crossed he doesn't make any more for the rest of the season I've only actually made one change to the team so the back four is Hendry, Kelleher, Songo and Rideout now for me personally I think Songo should have been captain he's always gone to be captain when Paul he has been sent off in previous matches, so I'm not too sure why Rydalge got the armband. I have nothing against Rydalge. I think Songo would be much better suited to that. I've kept Kelleher in there over Pordy O'Connor. I think it would be harsh to drop Kelleher based on the performance against Scunthorpe. I actually thought he was one of the better players on the pitch. Now, we played quite well for the majority of the game against Scunthorpe, but I thought Kelleher did did well in that match. I think it would be hard to drop him. 
I think Powdy's the better player. I hope Powdy gets a new contract, but I think it would be hard to drop Kelleher. And in terms of the other options, we don't really have many other better options at fullback than Hendry and Rydalge at the moment. And we've only got three centre-backs as it is. And obviously, like I said, I want to keep Kelleher and Songo because that back four should have kept a clean sheet. Realistically, it was not nothing to do with any of them why we conceded that goal. Just as the more holding midfielder, just in front of the back four, I've gone with Elliot Watt. The two more advanced midfielders have gone with Jamie Walker. Obviously, did score another goal for us against Scunthorpe scored with about 18 to 20 seconds on the clock so I think he deserves to start once again the change that I have made though I brought Sutton in for Gilead I just think his energy will be a little bit more needed in a game like this I don't think Gilead was the greatest against Scunthorpe to be honest with you and obviously Sutton had a contract in uh, in a couple of games time so he does have a point to prove so for me personally I'd like to see Sutton get the start the front three which I mean it, it's a very deadly front three isn't it Pereira on the right Vernon on the left and Angle through the middle Angle just our best striker at the moment seems fit enough to be able to play longer well to be able to play from the start now obviously played 60 minutes I think against Scunthorpe before Lavery came on so for me personally I'd like to see Angle maybe get 70 minutes in this game Pereira and Vernon I thought they were decent for the first half an hour of that game against Scunthorpe but then as more time went on they started to fade away and they were making mistakes and stuff like that Vernon could have definitely had a hat trick in that game but for me personally I think Pereira and Vernon just fantastic to watch out there when they're linking up with Angle and even Walker it's, it's just a joy to watch on the bench then for me that I'd leave O'Donnell Paddy O'Connor Matty Folds Alex Gilead Callum Cook Keelan Lavery and Andy Cook now Mark Hughes has said it's very unlikely Aboisa will travel with the squad to Sutton so that's why I've not included him here he said there's a possibility though of him being included in next week's game against Carlisle. Now, this season has gone very fast, hasn't it? It doesn't feel like too long ago we were travelling down to Exeter to draw 0-0. They've obviously now been promoted since, so thankfully we'll have to do that journey next season. But this season has gone very fast. I'll be doing my season review and all that sort of stuff once the season is ended. I've got a lot of plans for off-season content coming up as well. Make sure you follow me on TikTok as well. We're trying to get to a 1,000 followers over there as soon as possible, so please make sure you are following me over there. So I'm going to post every single day throughout May. We've got like... All sorts of stuff going over there, so make sure you are following me over there. That would be massively appreciated. In terms of a score prediction for this match, we've Sutton's such a strong record at the moment. Our only win in like our last six or seven matches being against Scunthorpe. I can only really see a Sutton win, to be honest. I'm going to go with a 2-1 at Sutton. I can't really say I know too many of the Sutton players. I'll go with Wilson to score, and I'll also go with Randall to get the other goal for Sutton. In terms of a goal scorer for Bradford City, I am going to go with Dion Pereira to get the goal for the Bantams. But that is why I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, a like as always will be massively appreciated. If you could try and hit 50 likes, as I said, at the start of today's video, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers, so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already. Get your post notification button as well so you never miss a video of when I upload. And make sure as well to drop a comment in down in the comment section down below. What is your score prediction for this match? As I said, I'm going with a 2-1 Sutton for this game, but if you could maybe pick up a point, wouldn't be a bad result considering where Sutton are in the table. Share the video around with your family and friends as well. Finally, make sure to come over and follow me on Twitch. The link is down in the description down below. Oh, my name is Official SHD over there. We're currently doing a Bradford City save on Football Manager. We've just, well, tonight, just after this video goes out at five o'clock we'll be doing the transfer window for the second season so come over find out if we got promoted or not though thank you very much for watching today's video i do appreciate it a lot have a great rest of your day and obviously i won't be going to this game against Sutton because i'm not an absolute lunatic but i shall see you all saturday for another ground hop vlog peace